This lesson introduces the concept of Boolean searching, the query language for sophisticated searches. You will learn to compose search strings that will facilitate your ability to find information quickly and efficiently. Using different search engines, you will learn to compose searches that take the best advantage of internet resources and also examine the strengths and weaknesses of each. Finally, you will also exercise your new skills for researching on the internet. Search engines are powerful software programs that can be used to locate the information you require. Some search engines are built into databases, such as those that act as a front end to electronic encyclopedias. Some are standalone applications running on networked servers which reach out into the internet. Internet search engines are designed to search for document titles, text, directories, FTP files and even gopher files. While each search engine employs techniques that distinguish it from the others, they are all built around Boolean logic. The Boolean search technique combines keywords or phrases into a string so as to limit the search. The search engine needs to locate only those terms that have been specified in your string. When you pass a string to a search engine, the program will look for matches and return what is called a hit. This is not an intuitive process. Rather, the search engine matches each letter of your string. To understand what happens when you specify a search string, let us look at the picture shown here. You want to find information on investment banking in Martinique in the Caribbean. Assume circle A is your first term, Martinique, and B is your second term, investment. If you search first on Martinique, hoping to find a reference to investments in a document title, your search would appear as shown here. As you can see, this search returns all the documents containing the word Martinique. Maybe you would get lucky and see a probable title in the list of hits. But do you have the time? If you search again on investment, your search will yield every document the search engine can locate which contains the word investment. You could spend hours trying to find the information you require. Using the Boolean operator AND, you can narrow down your search by being more specific about what you want the search engine to return. For this, you have to specify Martinique and investment as the search string. This concept is illustrated here. You could also think of other words or terms that would make the search even more specific. For example, Martinique and investment and banking. The more terms you specify using the AND operator, the more you limit your search and thereby reduce the time you spend looking for information. If you do not know exactly what information you are looking for or want to broaden your search, you can use the Boolean OR operator when specifying the search string. If you want to eliminate topics, you can use the NOT operator. Here you have an example showing the effect of using the OR and NOT operators. A multiple word query employing several operators can have express impact on the number of hits that can occur. Here is an example where a combination of Boolean operators has been used to specify the search string. Each of the internet search engines provide assistance to guide you in entering an acceptable Boolean search string. Many search engines expect the user to place quotation marks or parentheses around phrases or words that must appear next to each other in the results. For example, if you are doing research on acid rain, you would key in acid rain. Otherwise, the search engine will search for documents that have both words in them, but not necessarily next to each other. You may get results that include any document having the words rain and acid, but have nothing to do with acid rain. It is important to remember that each search engine has its own unique features, which are described in the help section of the website to which the search engine belongs. In the following exercise, you will continue using the quotation marks. Some search engines do not use quotation marks. They are simply ignored and do not affect the results. Each site provides a description of its database and tips for using the search engine most effectively.
Most of the search engines now accept and in some cases prefer the use of symbols when constructing Boolean searches. For example, the plus symbol is used in place of AND and the minus symbol is used in place of NOT. Some search engines will also accept wildcards, that is, an asterisk at the end of a keyword to indicate that the rest of the word can be any combination of characters. Here is a table that provides a quick reference of what is acceptable to some of the popular search tools. Over the years, a number of reviews and comparative studies of various search tools have been published on the internet. If you are interested in a one-stop comparison of the features of different search tools, try this webpage. Published by Jayan Liu of the Reference Department of Indiana University, this reference describes the size of the database of each search tool, special search features, tips for each tool, and special comments. Other internet research tools are reviewed as well. Best of all, hyperlinks to tools and features referenced are provided. If you really want to keep up on search engines, the best site to visit is Search Engine Watch. SearchEngineWatch.com This site has loads of information about each search engine along with tips and tricks for both search engine users and webmasters who want their sites found. Once you have identified the correct tools, it takes practice and experience to become a skilled internet researcher. The nature of internet resources is such that there is probably more than one way to find anything. The right way is the one that yields the results you need most efficiently. You will be constantly sharpening your edge as a researcher. As you have seen, search engines can vary widely in the hits they return, even if you use the same search terms at each site. Rather than going from one search engine to the next to gather all the hits yourself, you can use sites called Meta Search Engines to perform this task for you. These sites allow you to type in your keywords once and have your search entered at various search engines simultaneously. The results are then displayed by search engine. Often the Meta Search Engines will adjust your search request to match the format required by individual search engines. For example, you might type cats and kittens and the meta search engine will change that to plus cats plus kittens for search engines that only accept symbols. Besides saving time, meta search engines can also give you a quick comparison of search engines. If you find that one site consistently seems to more closely match your criteria when compared to others, then you might want to use that search engine for the majority of your searches and save the meta sites for when you need a broader array of hits. Although search engines may be the most common tools used on the internet, there are other sites that focus on specific areas. These sites can be used when you require information in one of these specific areas. Libraries have been serving the information needs of the general public for many years in the real world, and this has been extended to the internet. The one drawback of libraries on the internet is that most of them can only provide references. You still need to go to a physical location to obtain the text of articles, watch videos or listen to audio tape. However, it is much easier to hop from site to site on the internet than it is to travel from library to library in the real world. What better place would there be to start your library search than the largest library in the United States, the Library of Congress? You can search the Library of Congress catalog as well as other libraries that use the same Z39.50 protocol. What is Z39.50? The Library of Congress describes it as a national standard defining a protocol for computer-to-computer -computer information retrieval. Z39.50 makes it possible for a user in one system to search and retrieve information from other computer systems that have also implemented Z39.50 without knowing the search syntax that is used by the other system. Conducting research on other companies is one of the primary reasons for which businesses began using the Internet. Of course, you can always go to another company's website 
to learn about them. But several government resources give you information beyond what most companies post on a site. The government collects volumes of information, most of which companies are required to submit as per law. Some information is public domain, meaning it can be made available to the general public. Another big reason why companies and individuals use the internet is to gather product information. By gathering all the necessary information, you can make a more informed purchasing decision. If you use a search engine, you may end up with lots of hits, but you may need to jump from site to site to gather all the information. There are two general trends on the internet that are helping consumers and corporate purchasing agents to deal with this situation. One of these is information agents, which gather information from other sites regarding prices. For example, Bargain Finder, http colon slash slash bf dot c-s-t-a-r dot ac dot com slash bf slash is a service that will search sites on the internet which sell CDs to find you the lowest price on any CD you specify. The other type of site is a consortium of vendors who put their products in a common database. This differs from information agents in that the listings are voluntary.